Hey everyone, Sly47 here. Let's uh, watch me do something stupid. <laughs> Hey everyone, Sly47 here. Welcome to 2020's Dear God video. Uh, <laughs> why did I do this? Why why did I even decide to do this? This is this is insanity. This is this is just pure this is pure insanity. This is pure insanity. Hey everyone, Sly47 here. Welcome to my wall of insanity and welcome to the video in which I will slowly lose any sanity left that's left in me. Hey everyone, Sly47 here. Welcome to August 2022's premium ship tier maker review. As you can see, we have 2021s right here, and now we've got all the new ones. I'm hoping that I didn't miss any, else I'm gonna probably hear about in the comments down below and have just <clears throat> an existential crisis in from that, because this is, a, this, is, this is gonna be a long one. Hope you all are ready for this. I'm looking forward to it because we do have some upsets, some change-ups, maybe some overvaluing, undervaluing, depending on my old reviews. I've had a lot more time in order to test out some of these ships and then also try out these new ships to tell you where my opinion stands on them. And I'd love to know, of course, your opinions down below. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do the horrible thing and reset this. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay, rankings. Let's go through them and just a little preface here. Okay, this list and where I position them isn't always going to be about how good those ships perform in their tier. They can kind of correlate, but that doesn't always mean this is a lot more about whether or not you should buy this ship or not. So not necessarily talking this massive meta of premium ships overall, but a mix of that plus more about purchasability. So let's talk about this let's get into it so great to buy these are ships that are great for just about everyone most people will enjoy them and perform pretty well in them if they learn their niche or just learn how strong they are with a good captain and everything good these are ships that are just solid they're they, they fit their position well if you're interested in them you're gonna have a good time if you're not interested you might want to start just have a little bit more thought into before purchasing them but overall they will still hold their own in their fields Niche. So these are ships with unique play styles. You will need to think about these before you buy them. Is this a ship that interests you because it has a unique niche that hey, sounds like a lot of fun? Or it's got something where a lot of skill might be required to pull its power out of it in the battle within the meta that it, that it sits in. Playable. These are ships that, hey, you know what? If you want them, they're, they'll work. They'll work generally, but they're not going to hold up to much better ships of those metas or the each tier so just in, just an fyi you might want to think a little bit harder on these and then collectors of course this is just for people who want to have them and grab the battle honors on them and maybe have them sit in port and be beautiful port decorations these are not good ships but in general i would stay away from these so now we've gone over rankings let's uh let's get into this it's gonna be a long one let's go the Admiral Graf Spey, I previously actually had it in niche. I'm going to actually move it up to good. I kind of undervalued it after I got in my main account, played it a bit. I think I focused too much on its faults last time. When you utilize the guns wells, its skills, secondaries, it can handle most DDs and cruisers easily. And, you know, with the torpedoes, if you play it right, you actually can take on a lot of battleships of its tier and even higher. It does take a little bit of skill to pull that off, but overall, I think it's in a good place. I know we recently had a just swarm of them, of a swarm of bad players, but just like the West Virginia, don't knock it for that situation. Actually try it out and play it, and I might find it's actually pretty good. Admiral Makarov, I actually had this in good. But to me, I think I was undervaluing its capability of just being a commander trainer. And plus, once again, it is a Nuremberg class, which is in the top three of all of the cruisers at tier six. So in my opinion, it is actually a great to buy if you are interested in this. It's just a Russian Nuremberg, which, of course, challenges its Russian rival at that tier for being one of the best cruisers of its tier. So highly would suggest it. Great to buy. Agincourt, it's great to buy, stays in great to buy. It's a hilarious, just DD destroying and fire starting machine. It is a slower ship, so do understand that. But overall, it will treat you well. If you treat it well, you'll have a blast at tier five, just sending DDs back and teaching them, hey, <laughs> don't go near an HMS battleship. 
<laughs> especially when they have HE loaded. Jeer. So this was sitting in good, more in playable, kind of living between those two. To me, I think it's been actually power corrupt a little bit in its niche at that tier. So just in comparison to other ships, I think it's firmly and playable in my opinion. It's still a fine ship. It is fun, but it's it, its niche is not very strong. And then add on top of it, there's other ships that are stronger and still have its niche. So it's kind of been power corrupt in that position. So goal so i previously had this in good it's no i was led astray by a bunch of probably really fun games and really good but when you actually play it for longer than just you know five six games you start running into its problems it's just doesn't quite work for its here it's fun but those shell arcs and everything and the lack of damage from the torpedoes and just the spread of them as well it just doesn't fit in good in my opinion so it's it's playable but yeah I, I wouldn't go out of your way for it alabama so goes right into good it's an incredibly solid i'd argue the best north carolina class in this game so if you like that and you want that get it i'd highly suggest it it's a fun ship north carolinas aren't generally for me but you know for some people if they can handle the north carolina and just want a better one probably even eking a great to buy for that particular player so Alaska, this is unfortunately our first collectors, the horrible dispersion of these guns. Yes, it has a lot of skills and it can help and be a good support player, but that dispersion just basically kills all of your damage. You have a just enough armor situation, so you absolutely just get ripped apart by almost everything. It's just no, get its bigger brother to Puerto Rico over this. It's it's do not buy this, stay away from it. If you happen to get it, at least you got the you know, the titanium, I think, out of it. So you got that going for it. But yeah, no, just don't, just don't. Anchorage, a tier 9 buffalo that was in playable. It has torps, but it did get a buff with smoke. So now it's in the good category. I'd highly suggest this ship if you are a cruiser main. It's a fun time. It comes in clutch at times, though. Those torpedoes are more of kind of situational because they are long range, slow torpedoes. But overall, the guns are good with the smoke. It can be a pretty deadly ship in the right hands. And Shen, I actually had this in niche, but to me, it definitely sits in good. Now, I undervalued it, just its capability for its tier. It is just an incredibly solid ship for that. It doesn't have deep water, so I don't have to deal with that bullshit and such. But the guns are great. The skills are great. It's one of the best, I think, it's Gnevany class ships in the game. So I highly would suggest it if you're interested in it. Arizona. Now, this goes right into good, in my opinion. It's similar to the NC class of the Alabama to the New Mexico class of the Arizona. It's the better version of it. It just is. It's got the precise aim. Absolutely wrecks of that tier. One of the best tier six battleships in the game, in my opinion. It hits hard. It's good. You'll enjoy it. So, of course, you do have the New Mexico slowness of it. But at the same time, at least you got 12 guns to absolutely just wall up people. Arkansas. This goes right into collectors. It's unbearably slow. Its guns are, you could argue, decent, but it's just that tier... It just doesn't do well, and it's just better as a collector's item, and you probably just unlock it via the mission crates or something like that. You'll just get it, grab the battle honors, get that all done with, and never touch it again. So, yeah. Arc Royale. So, talked to a few carrier commanders about this, and yeah, it goes right into good. It's stupid easy, sets fire as easy, it's generally annoying to play against. It's not one of the better of its tier, but it is still incredibly strong. So, if you like carriers and you want to set fires and have a simple game... Arc Royale is there for you. Asashio. This goes right into niche because it has a playstyle specifically that allows you to be a Shimikaze at its tier once a game. Twice a game if you have the Legendary Commander. But overall, you're going to want to be a Torpedo Boat Captain. You want to know how to play that. If you are that player, it's pretty much great to buy. This is the ship for you. But overall, it's going to be niche depending on if you like that playstyle or not. Ashitaka, so this goes right into good. It's a very bland, basic tier 7 battleship if you want that. And, you know, a Japanese commander trainer, it's right here for you. Just good. Atlanta, this was a niche and stays a niche. It's just good. It's a death by a thousand cuts, good torpedoes, good AA, smoke once. But it's dangerous in regular games and insane in respawn. It's a fun light cruiser. I enjoy it. There's a newer version of it that I'd say is arguably a bit better. But overall, it's still a good ship. If you like U.S. light cruisers, it will treat you well. 
Well, everyone, we are 15 ships in and during editing, and thank you so much to Hiromi for spotting this. I already missed a ship in the list, so we got the Aurora. Luckily, yeah, it's, it's collectors. You're going to unlock it. It's tier three. You're not going to play it much, and you're going to be done with it, and it's, it's just going to sit in your port. So, yeah. Azuma, right into collectors. I, as much as some people have tried to change my opinion on the Azuma, I'm sorry. It's just for tier nine, mixed in. It does it just massive, horrible armor. You give Citadel Crises out to people. You never see anyone playing it for that particular reason. There are just are a few people that really do enjoy it. So understand there are the few and the proud, but for most people, it's it's a collector's. Do not buy it. Don't touch it. Baird. It's a good premium light cruiser for the French. I absolutely love it with rapid reload, boost, everything. It gives you a little bit of a taste of what a Colbert will be like, but you have those torps that can help you out with that tier rate heavy meta there. It's a massive ship, so make sure you don't show broadside to anyone or you will be sent back to port pretty quick. But it's still a blast just fire starting and then occasionally going after DDs and watching your AP just send them right back to port pretty quickly. Belfast, a lot of people would be great to buy its Scourge Tier 7. No, it's just in good, and I put it in good because you need a great commander behind it. You need to know how to play HMS ships like this, but now you have HE, so it just furthers your skill, furthers your power. It's got a lot of capability. I highly would suggest it. If you are a cruiser main, it is great to buy, especially if you have BD or you've gone up the Minotaur line. But for most players, it's just me good because they can't take advantage of all of the firepower and all the strengths that the Belfast have. You need to have a little bit of skill to pull that strength out of this ship. So overall, good. Now, Belfast 43, this ship is not out as of recording. This, in my opinion, probably will sit right next to Belfast in good. If you are a cruiser main, great to buy, but most players, it will be just in good. I really am interested to see how it handles the tier eight meta as the tier seven one handles it quite well. But of course, without the torpedoes that the 43 has, the regular Belfast kind of struggles, especially against things like the Roma and the Richelieu and everything, but it can still be an incredibly annoying ship and adding those torpedoes, potentially any other buffs that they add to it. I think personally, Belfast 43 is definitely going to be in good, if not great to buy. So we'll find out when it comes out, but that's my, that's my early prediction. Let's see how right I am. Benham goes right into niche. It's mine layering torpedoes. It's got a crap ton of them. It's a fun ship, but because of the guns and the skills and kind of also the tier, in my opinion, it's bigger brother. The Somers is just much more capable and a lot more fun, but Benham is still a good time. So if you're interested in it, it's there. Liskavika, this goes right into great to buy. You want to have all the abilities of the European destroyers, but now you have smoke. Yeah, you get flooding missions done instantly. This is by far one of my more favorite ships to play at tier 7. Just has it all. It does incredibly well for its tier. And you have that smoke just in case you uh, maybe push up a little bit too much or to strategically make sure someone floods and fires for the rest of the game. Borgonia, boy was I wrong on this one. I previously had it in playable. Oh, hell no, it's not. It's in great to buy. The only thing that I have to immediately say is that this ship is unobtainium. Most of the time, it comes out in a crate that's 0.07% chance. Please, working mean, put a bundle out, okay? You will make Boku Bucks. Please, this is a great ship. Rapid reload, speed, a ton of guns. Yeah, the armor is a little bit lighter, but you know, once again, you got a lot of guns, so you can do a lot of damage. I absolutely enjoy it, and I highly would suggest picking it up if it ever comes out in a easier way to pick up. Now for the Brandenburg, we actually have a new ship here. Overall, it's playable. It's unfortunately very mediocre for its tier. It can be fun, but in my opinion, there are way better items to pick up for its tier. And it's pretty much kind of similar to the Asia where it just, it just gets pushed out of good just because of how many other ships are there. If you are interested, it is a fine ship, but yeah, there, there's, there's way better ships of its tier to pick up before it. Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. Sorry, I had to add that in there, but it's in good. It would be in great if they give it a sonar, but unfortunately it's basically just raw firepower, raw HE, raw AP, okay armor at tier 10, but with no support capability. So in my opinion, it's a fun time, 
but it just doesn't go into great to buy because it doesn't have that support at tier 10. I love mine, so if you like the Des Moines class and you just want an additional gun, yeah, it's right there for you. You're swapping out your utility for more firepower, and it will show up in games. It will. It's a very strong ship, but it needs that sonar. Come on, Wargaming. Sonar, please. Please. <laughs>